Welcome to Reality T Times 2, where we're not going to be talking about Trump's reality TV. We're going to be doing a bonus episode from my other podcast, Next Take Podcast. I forgot we're literally at the end of June here, and I haven't given you a bonus episode for June yet, but I'm going to be doing that now. So what's really awesome about this bonus episode that I'm going to be giving you is that you're getting technically two episodes in one because both of them are quite short. So I'm going to be giving you both of them and it's Pride Month, of course. We should be celebrating Pride and I'm, I mean, I, I, I'm definitely an advocate and I'm an ally, ally. So I'm, I could not pass up the opportunity to give you episodes that I feel are so near and dear. These topics, I hate to call them topics, but these stories that one of them became very new to me in the last few years. And which I, I loved being able to kind of take a full circle and, and do my own coverage on on this person. And also got to put a face to the, to the name because I actually didn't have a face to the name. And I I feel like I learned so much from covering this person. And I am talking about Marsha P. Johnson, who is going to be the first half of the of the episode on the bonus episode. So I was very excited to talk about her and I and everything that she stood for. Obviously, her life was cut short and which is horrific in and of itself and even more so because it's an unsolved case and it, it's very near and dear to me and I think, you know, without having that true crime element to it, which this does have, it's actually really amazing the work that she's done and the roads that she paved for the LGBTQ plus community, not only today, but it's, you know, started back in the 60s and 70s. And it is what it is today because of her contribution to it. So I think that she's absolutely an incredible figure. So I'm happy that I was able to talk to her, uh, sorry, talk about her with, with my co-host, Mikkel. And the other story that is absolutely near and dear to my heart, there is probably never a day that passes where I do not think about this person and the tragic loss. And not only that, like there is definitely a lot more heavy on the true crime element in it, but unfortunately due to it was something that we, there's things that we wouldn't have if it wasn't for the horrific death that he unfortunately went through. And I am talking about Matthew Shepard and it was something that I think was probably one of the very first true crime stories that I heard. And there are elements of the story that has always literally have left an imprint on my heart. And I definitely couldn't pass up the opportunity to talk about him. Again, another face to the name as well, because I never had a face to the name prior. And he was just such a sweet, sweet young man who was still coming into his own. And it's so unfortunate. But this is just kind of a look into what we did for this month. Of course, I keep saying in those episodes that we are going to do better next year and then and next take where we're going to be doing an entire month for Pride. It was something that stupid me because I'm the one in charge of doing episodes where I'm like, why are we doing a full Pride month? So we are going to be doing that. We're definitely planning for that next year. So I'll definitely have something for you next year as well for Pride Month. And again, like we're getting towards the end here and I'm like, oh no. Yeah, so I'm going to give you a look into that. Again, you're getting two for one. We're going to be starting with Marsha P. Johnson, which was the first one that we did earlier in the month. And then we're going to end it off with Matthew Shepard, which was the second one that we did for the month. 
and it's going to be in that order. I'm not going to come back in in between. I'm just going to transition from one to the other. But again, if you want to, I mean, you're going to get the full episode, but I will link to the episodes from Next Day Podcast in it as well. I will, if, I don't know if I'm, oh, maybe I could link to the Facebook post that we've done, the Instagram post that we've done with their pictures and whatnot. But again, you can always go to them and, and the episodes there as well. But again, June was a pretty good month for episodes on, on the side of the front. We had different types of episodes this month. Father's Day, we talked to Colts and all of that. So you can definitely go to the link for the episodes where you can get access to the other episodes that we have as well. But that's basically all I'm going to say. I do want to make this focus on these Pride Month episodes. So without further ado, I'm going to transition you into Marsha P. Johnson, followed by the Matthew Shepard episode as well. Again, I'm not going to have anything, I'm not going to have the regular outro for Reality T times two, but I will have down on the show notes all the information for Next Take Podcast so that you can link to all the different things that we have, our social media, website and everything. It'll all be down in the show notes. But without further ado, let's start the episode. What's up, everyone? This is the Next Tape Podcast with Mikhail and and Tanika, where we have conversation on different topics. So, big month. It is definitely a big month. Huge month to celebrate. Yeah. Tell them what it is, Tanika. We are celebrating Pride Month. That's where. We're... Yeah. Yay. <laughs> so. Yeah, so with Pride Month, um, we're going to definitely do better next year. We're going to do a full month dedicated yeah. to Pride. Um, but for this year, we're going to do bonus episodes. Um, mm. And we're going to shed some light on the different parts of the community. This, um, with this episode, we're going to be focusing more on the transgender slash well i think she would have been more of a transgendered person but we're going to be talking about marcia p johnson and i'm very excited to talk about her um unfortunately i didn't get a chance to watch the documentary before doing this but um i am very excited to talk about her don't know if you know anything about marcia p johnson yeah. I never heard yeah. of her and I never heard of her. Okay. But you know, educate me on this. Yeah. So go right. ahead. Take it away. Marsha P. Johnson. He was born on August twenty fourth, nineteen forty five, in in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Was unfortunately Found dead July 6, 1992, in New York City. Unfortunately, there's not many stories that don't have a sad part of it mm. when it comes to talking about people of the LGBTQ plus community. But we're gonna definitely celebrate her life before we focus on that. So she was a black American drag queen an activist who was dedicated mm-hmm. to social justice for the gay and transgender community. She was a pioneer of the gay rights movement in the late 1960s and spent the following two decades advocating for equal rights for the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer community. Johnson also took part in gay pride parades and events. Johnson was assigned male at birth and began wearing girls' clothing at a very young age. 
However, after experiencing sexual assault at the hands of a 13-year-old boy, she temporarily stopped experimenting with feminine fashion, obviously to protect herself. After completing high school in 1963, she moved to New York City. There, Johnson began frequenting bars and nightclubs dressed as a woman called Black Marcia. Johnson gradually cultivated a unique personality and style and eventually began calling herself Marsha P. Johnson. She stated that the middle initial stood for pay it, no mind, a phrase she often used when questioned about her gender and lifestyle. Mm. Johnson became well known in the LGBTQ community for her colorful wigs, often crowned with flowers or artificial fruit, red heels, sparkly robes, and multiple strands of costume jewelry. For a while, she performed when the drag group Hot Peaches, or with the drag group Hot Peaches. Johnson also earned money through participating in sex work, but she was often abused by clients and arrested on occasion. Johnson began going to the Stonewall Inn, which was a bar, a gay bar in the Greenwich Village section of New York City, in the late 1960s. We will be talking about Stonewall next year. Oh, yeah. Because that has huge significance on of itself. She was one yeah. of the demonstrators present during the Stonewall riots in 1969, protesting against police harassment and social discrimination of gay and transgender individuals. Now, a popular urban myth states that Johnson threw the first brick at Stonewall, though this has been disproved, but I kind of like it. Um, after the Stonewall riots, Johnson joined the Gay Liberation Front, which was a catalyst for the gay rights movement. In 1970, she co-founded the Street Transvestite Action Revolutionaries, which acronym is STAR, with fellow transgender right act 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 this I can't talk right now. To uh, this, yeah, it's a, don't thank worry. You. Sylvia Rivera. The two worked for gay and transgender rights while also providing housing for LGBTQ youth mm-hmm. living on the streets. Johnson and Rivera acted as house mothers, guiding and protecting queer youth. In the 1980s, Johnson who was HIV positive, became an AIDS activist and joined ACT UP, which was an organization formed to bring attention to the AIDS epidemic. That is also something else we're going to talk about next year too. I think it's very important to talk about the AIDS epidemic. Yeah. Um, definitely something to this day. I just can't wrap my mind around how it got so bad, but the government is partially to blame for that. But we'll talk about that next year. She was noticed for her work and was even featured in a print series by American artist Andy Warhol. Throughout her life, Johnson suffered from mental illness and was in and out of psychiatric hospitals. Those who knew her described her as a volatile and an unpredictable person. In July 1992, like I've mentioned already, her body was found floating in New York City's Hudson River. Despite the evidence and the state of her body, the police ruled her death a suicide. Although friends and family cited a lack of evidence supporting that claim, arguing though she had struggled with mental health, she never expressed suicidal ideation. Additionally, she was found with a head wound. So for anyone who's the story of her death Mm -hmm. pretty much believe this was murder in 2012 the police under renewed public pressure reopened the case they reclassified her death as a drowning from undetermined causes but to this day the case still remains unsolved because go ahead so so there's actually people who don't believe this wasn't murder the police but i think a lot of people who have heard the story who knew her personally who knew 
of circumstances surrounding her death don't believe this was a suicide and this was a murder. I, for one, believe this was a murder. Um, that's kind of that's kind of sad that you know. Agreed. Yeah. And I think a lot of this had to do with homophobic homophobia, yeah. um, transphobia. Yeah. And this is why this was ruled a suicide at first. And although mm. it's now been reclassified as undetermined, it's still not murder. They don't see this as a murder case. They see this as a drowning caused by undetermined circumstance. Crazy. Agreed. They should they should investigate a little more than that. So Yeah, but it's been so many years now. Yeah. It's been yeah. over thirty years that mm. there's other cases. This is New York City, so mm-hmm. there's gonna be other cases that are now more important than solving her for death. She deserves that. Yeah. So, as I've mentioned, several documentaries have been made celebrating Johnson's life and activism. In 2020, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announced that a seven-acre waterfront park in Brooklyn was being renamed for Johnson. And I think that's pretty incredible. And that's basically the the bonus episode for her. I do have mm-hmm. photos of her that I'll post. And yeah. No okay. car. Well the lesson I wanna say or say the statement I wanna say is that um don't be ashamed on who you are. Yeah. Um, love. I think uh, before well, you continue finishing, I'll say. Yeah, what I'm love fully, equally. Don't be ashamed of who you are. So yeah. go, go, ahead. go ahead. I think, un- unfortunately, I didn't get the statistics, but I think, unfortunately, mm-hmm. hers is not the only case of a transgendered woman who either be. Or have either been murdered, hurt, mm-hmm. gone missing. Mm-hmm. There is a case of someone more recently, I would say, believe she went, she disappeared in 2019 um, in Texas, near the border of Mexico. And she went out and she didn't come home. And even though they can't find her it is unfortunately pretty determined that something bad at the end of the day probably happened to her and it's sad when you hear these cases and unfortunately a lot of transgendered women Mm -hmm. are more targets of hate crime than anyone else Mm -hmm. and there's not a lot of change there it's like on the one hand you want to say to them be safe protect yourselves and Mm -hmm. you know don't approach just any tom dick and harry out there because you don't know who you're gonna get you know who you're gonna talk to right at the same time it's like they should be able to be themselves women Mm -hmm. in general should be able to be themselves and be free do whatever they want. Yeah. I'll have to save. And unfortunately, that's just not the case for, in this case, transgender women. Mm. And that's unfortunate. Yeah, that's very unfortunate that there's hate out there. Mm-hmm. Or bad, bad, back then. Ooh. And now. No, well, I, yeah, now. It hasn't changed. But I, yeah, but I feel like we have made like you know progress. Not over... really. Really, Not you, don't, you, you don't think so? Mm-mm. I mean, we have a lot of work to do, but like I feel like we made progress. Not as much aware... as 
I will tell you right now All right. from this, again, I didn't get the statistics, but the statistics are mm-hmm. horrific for transgender okay. black women at that. It is horrific. Mm-hmm. The amount of people who are being hurt, who are dying, mm-hmm. who are committing suicide at that too. Right. It's not great. Because the reason why I say this with why I wanted to make sure I shed light on transgender people, mm-hmm. not just a gay person or a lesbian person. I wanted to shed light on them too. Mm-hmm. Is that even people within their own community don't accept them. Mm-hmm. So yes, there is yes, still yes, yes. so much work that needs to be done. Well, I I do see that because like there's a lot, even the even like the community of the L B L G B T Q. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, well, there, there's a, there's a community that's L B G only. What do you mean? So there is a, I I seen a community that's on like you know Reddit that disqualifies uh. Oh, I Trend. see. Yeah. So they're not doing the LGBT. Yeah. Key. They're just doing LGBT. Yeah. That's sick. Because yeah. again, LGBTQ is not. It's also less. So it's it's you can't fit everything, you know. We do many letters, yeah. but LGBT has always been the case. They extended it to the LGBTQ plus in the last like decade or so. Yeah. It's always yeah. been the LGBT community. It's always been that. The T has always been involved in that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, again. Yeah, I, yeah, I see in Reddit and Facebook groups. The hatred. Yeah. And, it's, and again, that just, that's not just the LGBTQ plus community that is doing it to themselves and to people of their own community. We don't just see it there, too. It's also, you know, black people do it to each other. Yeah. other it's it's just this hatred to, like if you don't understand something or understand someone then learn don't yes. single yeah. them out 100 get educated there's research on the internet um t- also talk to talk yeah there's enough yeah. hatred coming from people like right now the states are dealing with the fact that you know people don't want drag queens involved with their kids because Mm. god forbid something's gonna happen you know Mm. we have enough hatred coming from just small-minded white men let's be real here that we don't need to have that small-minded mentality among the community too like it's i don't understand (laughs) I, i don't understand no, and yeah, the hate has got to stop. So it does. Just be positive. Just, just be positive. Agreed. So this ends this episode of the Next Tape Podcast. The Next Tape Podcast is available now on all podcast platforms we also have a website called solo.to slash next tape podcast where else are we at tanika we are on facebook and instagram at next take podcast and twitter and tiktok at next take pod so we do have an email contact us at mikhail tanika at gmail.com that is mikhail tanika Sorry, my bad. Mikhail Tanika at gmail.com. So um, we quite learned a lot about um, Marsha P. Johnson and Marsha P. Johnson, the transgender community in in general. Yes. Yes. And then we just talked about, you know, the the community as well. Oh, be. G T and finish that off for me, Tanika. L T P T Q plus. Yeah. Okay. All right.
So, anything else we got to say? Just spread love, not hate. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So, I'm Mikkel. And, and I'm Tamika. We are out until next week. Peace, guys, and positivity. <laughs> Bye. What's up, everyone? This is the Next Tape Podcast with Mikkel and... And Tanika. Where we have conversations on different topics. So today is a very cool episode. Is that right, Tanika? Yes. Well, cool, but you know, I don't want to say cool based on who we're talking about, but um, mm-hmm. it's going to be an informal in- one. Interesting. Oh, sure. Informal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, what are we? What will we be talking about uh, in today's episode? So we are doing our final bonus episode for Pride Month. Um, mm-hmm. Again, I'm going to keep saying this. We're going to do better next year, um, and actually make sure we dedicate the entire month to Pride Month next year. But we are going to be talking about. Matthew Shepard in this episode. Okay. Okay. Right. Should be a great one. Let's get to it. Well, it's gonna it's gonna be a doozy one, but yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so before I get into the case and the reason why I want to talk about him in particular is this is one of the cases that I think I heard very early on in my glove, question mark, of true crime. Um, Because it's very, it lasted with me. I don't think there's a a day that goes by that I don't think about him. So, and what he had to endure in his life, unfortunately, but let's get into it. So, Matthew Shepard um, was born on December 1st, 1976 in Casper, Wyoming, and he would lose his life, was taken from him on October 12th, 1998 in Fort Collins, Colorado. He was an American college student who was severely beaten because of his sexual orientation and was left to die. This is what happened um i think at the end i'll because i don't think they touch on it here but at the end i'll kind of say probably the thing that really just knocked me in my stomach and i'm like i'll never not Hmm. think about this case he was he was 21 at the time was he he was young yeah he was very young had his whole life ahead of him um so he was discovered and then hospitalized, um, though he would you know, pass from his injuries. Um, his death, which was evidence of the physical danger that homosexuals still to this day face in the United States and everywhere else, not just in the States, but everywhere, it played a key role in, th- in the 2009 passage of legislation that expanded federal hate crime law to include violence committed because of the sexual orientation of the victim. And a lot of this was stick handled by his mother. She's done amazing work um, after his passing. Yeah, I can see that. Um, Yeah. He has a foundation, Mm -hmm. I believe. There is a foundation, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Shepard's father... He was an oil rig inspector who worked in Saudi Arabia. Um, and mm-hmm. they, the whole family moved there. It wasn't just him. Um, 
but Matthew attended high school in Casper, Wyoming, and at the American School in Switzerland before heading back to the States and going to University of Wyoming at Laramie. And that is probably the foundation you saw was the Laramie Project. Um, that's mm -hmm. might be the one you saw. There might be one in his name too, but Laramie Project is yeah, there's one in his name work. I'm seeing right now. The, mm -hmm. Ma the, the Matthew, Matthew Shepard Foundation. Foundation, yes. Yeah, and there's also the Laramie Project, which is very um, well known. Does amazing work. Um, right. So he studied there, and what he studied was foreign relations, um, languages, and political science. On campus, Matthew had been open about his sexuality and had been open about his sexuality even before he was in college or university. And um, and he was involved in the university's lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender LGBT student association. Um, there's also another part of this too that I think he was very open in his sexuality, but he also dealt with a lot of personal things too that I don't want to necessarily address on this episode because that's not what I want to get to um, but he did endure if you know the story, his story um, he did endure some horrific things as well um, before this even happened so on October 7th 1998 Matthew was befriended I hate that term because they did not befriend him but they quote unquote befriended befriended two men by the name of Aaron McKinney and Russell Henderson who were posing as gay in order to lure him away from a local bar. Now, the the, Thor, the fourth thought of on these guys' parts to know, okay, clearly this guy is a gay guy, so we're going to lure him away for what? They were two straight men. And I'm pretty sure they were in relationships as well. So it just didn't really make any sense. Um, mm. They drove him to a rural area where they tied him to a fence, administered a brutal beating, and left him to die in the cold. Shepard was discovered 18 hours later by a bic bicyclist and was rushed, still alive, but he was in a coma, to a hospital in Collins, Colorado, where he died four days later. And McKinney and Henderson were found guilty of his murder. So at least there was that. They definitely tried to use the the gay defense, but it didn't work in their favor. Um, and I think the one thing that stuck in my mind about this particular case is when they when he was found, which is not addressed here, mm -hmm. he was found tied to either was a fence or a pole, and he had tear tracks on his cheeks. And that's mm -hmm. kind of the thing that stuck in my mind was he cried. And this is, I just don't understand how you can treat someone so viciously. Yeah, I just don't understand it. That's disgusting. I agree. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just like, why do something like this? Why? That's the thing. Yeah. If you don't like him, then fine. You don't have yeah. to like him. You don't have to understand him. Mm -hmm. But you need to respect him and respect. This goes for not just you know, because he's a gay man, it's not even it's about yeah. that. It's just respecting everyone in general and respecting mm -hmm. their life. And they just didn't, just because mm -hmm. of his sexual orientation, and that's sick. Yeah, people shouldn't be, um, you know, be doing that for that reason. That's totally wrong in a lot of ways. So, um, yeah, why bring that hatred on somebody that, you know, that's innocent? Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Um, so Shepard's death attracted widespread attention 
not only in the small, small town of Laramie, which had a population of fewer than 30,000 people, but also across the country and around the world. Although federal laws at the time covered hate crimes based on race, color, religion, and national origin, if you want more details on the hate crime situation and freedom of speech, we did an episode on that. What episode was that? <laughs> Oh, I believe it was... I can probably check that right now. Episode 35. Okay. We got the number. There we go. There we go. Um, so nothing, as we've mentioned, included sexuality or sexual orientation. In terms of hate crime. Mm. In 98, Wyoming was one of 10 states that had no hate crime laws to protect... Um, particular categories of people. Shepard's death was cited by figures within the gay rights movement as clear-cut evidence of the need for um, more expansive federal hate crime legislation. 1,000%. Because this was, in the core of it, a hate crime. There's no mistaking that. 100%, yeah. These straight white men if you want to call them that who clearly were so just let me finish these men were clearly unsure of themselves or not comfortable in their own skins that they had to put their hatred probably Mm -hmm. of themselves Mm -hmm. and just just people in general onto this one person who did nothing wrong maybe he was flirting with them but I think again if they were pretending to be gay men he probably thought they were available and that he could approach them and it's just Uh, sick yeah they played they played him don't. And then they hurt him. Yeah, yeah. Don't and then don't they call them straight. Don't call them straight men. They're criminals. That's what well, they, they are. No straight men. When I mean straight, I mean heterosexual. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Um, because they, and all, pretty much we are told anyway. We don't know how truthful this is, but mm-hmm. we are told that they were heterosexual men. They were in heterosexual relationships they had girlfriends at least one of them i know for sure did but i think both of them did so that's why i used that term because that is what they did, claimed to be did, did they ever have like court dates to explain why they did this or they just like they didn't care oh. okay. i don't know if they care now they they did they were they went to trial um they did go to trial um mm-hmm. His father's victim impact speech, if no no one's heard it, um, I'm going to direct you to um, Ellen and Robbie Solve the Case. They did an episode of this and they played his father's victim impact statement. Um, One of the most moving things. um, I'm personally going to say if you don't cry through it, then I don't know what's wrong with you. because it's just Mm -hmm. so raw um Mm -hmm. but they did have a trial they did and that's why i said to you they use the gay defense oh he was gay so we had to protect ourselves from the gay man like that's what they and and it's a it's a legitimate it was anyways a legitimate defense it's not now i don't think but it was even in the 90s it was a legitimate defense it's ridiculous what a bunch of pieces Assholes. of people. Absolutely. 100%. Um, yeah. So, sorry. Okay, in 2007, the Local Law Enforcement Hate Crime Prevention Act, later dubbed the Matthew Shepard Act, which, well, you saw the foundation, there is an act, um, yeah. was introduced to address these shortcomings in the law, again, stick handled by his mother. Although the bill was passed by the U.S. House of Representatives, it was delayed because of widespread Republican 
sorry, uh, Republican were my uh, opposition, mm -hmm. including from U.S. President George W. Bush, mm -hmm. <laughs> who threatened to veto it again. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm going to hit some nerves with some people. Mm. I, I, I give grace to George Bush in certain situations, and I don't in others. So this is one of the others. Fuck you, George W. Bush. Honestly. Fuck you. Are we talking about the president? The former mm -hmm. president of the mm -hmm. United States? Well, the son, yes. I'm talking about George W. Bush, not George right, Bush yeah. the father. George Bush the son. Yes. Mm. Yeah, he's not the smartest bunch on the tree. No. And again, I I I I pretty much spent most of my remembrance anyways of, of the shit that he Yeah went through as president mm -hmm. hating him. Mm -hmm. Absolutely hated him. Yeah. But I did gain some, maybe some understanding of him and maybe some grace towards him having to deal with 9-11 and um, the war that came after it. And I mean, don't get me started on that. I can stay here forever on that, but I'm not going to. I did have a lot of grace for him for that because I can't imagine a president, any president having to go through these major events in right. one day. Because you gotta remember, it wasn't just the Twin Towers that were hit. It was also the Pentagon. And the White House was supposed to be hit that day, too. It wasn't. So I can't imagine. I mean, we, we'll save it because we are going to be doing a 9-11 episode. Um, obviously, on 9-11. And right. we will we'll save the 9-11 discussion for that. But I did have a lot of grace for him because I, I can't imagine having to do that. But where this is concerned, fuck you. Yeah. Because I don't understand why this would not have been passed. What if this was your child? What if this was your child being persecuted for just being them? This kid was mm. killed for just being himself. He was mm. born that way. He was born yeah. this way. So, like, it's just, I don't get it. Yeah, but, I don't. I don't understand him as a person. No, I don't either. But anyways, yeah. I'm not going to try to begin to. But anyways, yeah. in 2009, a modified version of the bill was finally approved by both the House and the Senate. Later that year, U.S. President Barack Obama, and that's my, that's my president, signed the mm -hmm. legislation, which is officially known as the Matthew Shepard and James Byrd Jr. Hate Crimes Prevention Act of 2009. It's a really long legislation but anyways if you're wondering who james bird jr is i can give you a little bit of information bird was an african-american who was brutally killed by three white supremacists in 1998 so the same year it's the same year that he he, he died the same year as matthew shepherd do mm. um so mm. Shepard was um, memorialized by the Matthew Shepard Foundation, as Michael mentioned earlier, an organization begun by his parents, Dennis and Judy, with a mission to, quote, replace hate with understanding, compassion, and acceptance. Through various educational initiatives, Matthew was remembered in the play The Laramie Project, a chronicle of his death composed by interviews with Laramie residents that was created by the techno 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 te techno the tectonic there we go sorry mm -hmm. theater project shortly after his death Shepard was also the subject of two television movies one was the Matthew Shepard story and the Laramie project both in 2002 the latter is a version of the play, as mentioned, because of concerns that his gravesite would be vandalized. I am sick to my stomach that that is even a thought that has to come across anyone's fucking mind. But people are sick, so 
Yeah. Matthew was not buried until 2018. So let me. He Wait died. A let Hold me. On. Re- you heard me right. 2018. He, why? 2018. Why? 20 years it, after his death. Is it because they didn't have the finances? Uh, no, they just did not no. want his burial site to be vandalized. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So it wasn't that they didn't the, have. Well, they didn't. Okay. They didn't have. From my memory, from what I've listened to, seen, and everything, they mm-hmm. didn't clearly, obviously, have the funds to bury their young child. Absolutely, mm. did not have that. Um, right. I think a lot. I don't know if they had to do fundraising to help with his burial and his funeral. I can't mm-hmm. remember if that was him or someone else. But that they potentially had the funds to bury him. They just didn't want to. They just didn't want his burial site to be vandalized. And I think it is beyond sickening to know that you can't even bury your child who was stolen from you until 20 years after his death. It's mm. absolutely sickening. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. Uh, mm. Hmm. Um, so he 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 was cremated. So when they buried him in 2018, his ashes were um, interred in the Washington National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. Hmm. So that's where he is now buried. Um, hmm. It's just sad to like when I think about 2018. I think about the fact like. 2018 is not that long ago yeah. that's that's only six years Five, ago six, six, yeah, six years ago yeah i just can't even imagine not having somewhere to go i mean yes mm-hmm. you might have his ashes but i mean i know everyone handles their family members ashes a little differently yeah. um my family we we, we cremated my great grandparents both of them and uh they were i think i think each child they had six kids each child had a little bit of their ashes but there is a burial we they buried the ashes once my um great grandpa passed and it's i just i can't imagine not having somewhere to go i just i just can't i can't yeah. And the only real reason you're not burying mm-hmm. his remains is because you're afraid someone will vandalize. And the thing is, it's like, I can't sit here and pretend like that can't happen because it has happened. There have been cases of people's burial sites being vandalized. Vandalized, yeah. It's not even like it's an unheard of thing. It happens and it's so sick to me. Yeah. It's sad. It's sad that people do that just for their entertainment. It's, re- it's ridiculous. Yeah. And but it, yeah, this 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 case for me has has been the one that I mm-hmm. I think when I time I hear it again, emotional again. The last time I would have heard it was when they covered it on, um, as I mentioned, Ellen and Ellen, Ellen and Robbie solved the case. Was the last time I heard it, which was just. October, um, mm-hmm. and this this is this, this is never a time where I hear the story that I don't get emotional. It's uh, it's the it's the the tear tracks of it because his tears stained his face. And I just and when you see his, I am going to be posting a picture of him, um, and uh, when you see his face, he's just. He's such a sweet, sweet boy, and he just lost his life. Didn't get a chance to explore his life, explore himself, mm-hmm. get a career, fall in love, get married, maybe mm-hmm. have kids if that's what he wants. And he didn't get to have any of those things because right. these fucks stole that from him. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, they're in prison, sure, but they get to stay, they get to live. And he doesn't get to live. Yeah. It's not fair. 
Yeah. But yeah. I do think yeah. this yeah. this is an important story to talk about because unfortunately he is not the first and he is not the last of hate crime against the LGBTQ mm-hmm. plus community. And it's this not not just this I can't I have no I don't think I have any more words about for this but um there's there's, yeah there's been a lot of experiences like this in the past but uh there's men that beat up a lesbian couple I feel like that was fairly recent I mean the last few years now but that Mm -hmm. happened too and I'm just like what are you gaining Mm -hmm. from doing this do you think that you're going to beat the gay out of these people? Is that what you're thinking? It's gonna, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, it's not. And it's not possible. And yeah, yeah, yeah it's if anything, especially in that case with the the lesbian couple who were beaten by, I don't know if it was multiple men or just one man. You're just making them hate men more. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like. I just don't. I just don't understand in that, especially in that case. What's your end goal? What's the, what's the end goal? I really yeah. want to know. Yep. Yeah, newsflash: There will always be uh, gay people in the world. Yeah. So, and you know what? Like, they can't make, get rid of them. N- but, and why would we? Honestly, yeah. they're probably one of the greatest groups of people. What are you mm-hmm. going to accomplish? Like, I. The, you know to kind of put like this out here i listen to and i've talked about them on my podcast maybe talked about them briefly here reality gaze one of my favorite podcasts that if i don't listen to them i start getting i get itchy because mm. <laughs> i love them so much and they're amazing men i don't know them personally but they're they're just they're amazing and we've had Tristan on here, who is a gay man. He was amazing. We talked, well, you didn't talk because you, you weren't on that section of it, but in the mental mm-hmm. health episode, we had Jake on mm-hmm. and they identify as as bisexual. And he's, he, they use both pronouns. They were amazing. And I just like, this is what I mean. It's like, look beyond their sexual orientation and just yeah. look at the person. I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't want to be judged because I'm a straight heterosexual woman. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be judged in my sexuality or my sexual orientation. Who cares? And what's it to you? What's it to you who I sleep with? That's that's none of your concern. Just know I'm happy. Just know I'm good with whomever that is. Same yeah. applies. Yeah. So we'll, we'll have all the Matthew Shepard uh, uh, links in the description. Such yeah, I think we foundation. should link to the Foundation's Laramie Project. I think we should link yeah. to those two. So uh, we'll have the, the story articles on what happened to Matthew Shepard in the descriptions as well. Um, so you guys can also check that out. So, um, yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's I just, think it's, there's also a, a documentary. Um, I can't remember what streaming service might have done it, but I believe there is one somewhere. Um, if you want to go that route as well. Again, I've, I've talked about Ellen Robbie's off the case is the most recent one, but I'm pretty sure Morbid's done one. Pretty sure, and that's why we drink has done one. I'm pretty sure, like, the, the, a lot of even Crime Junkie, I think, has done one. There's a lot of true crime podcasts that have yeah. covered this case as well. Um, so th- things sorry, like Morbid so. go really deep into everything. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, the documentary, Matt. Matt Shepard is a friend of mine. Is available yes. on YouTube. That's it. And you can also rent it on Google Movie Play. Right. And it was on YouTube. Okay. Apple I wanted TV. to watch it. I wanted to watch it, and I couldn't find it. Um, so that's good to know. 
I maybe add, once yeah, I can yeah. yeah um but yeah I heard it was it was well done mm-hmm. um I'm not sure if anyone if anything had been done prior to this besides the movies I'd mentioned um but I think this was long overdue to do a documentary yeah. for it for the story so but yeah yeah Yeah. all right so this ends this episode of next tape podcast the next tape podcast is available now on all podcast platforms we also have a website called solo.to slash next tape podcast where else are we at tanika we are on facebook and instagram at next take podcast and twitter and tiktok at next take pod all right and we also have a contact email contact us at mikhail tanika at gmail.com that is mikhail tanika at gmail.com so uh yeah we talked about um um the life of matthew uh shepherd um very sad very that, sad uh, that has happened to a young man that mm-hmm. was just trying to live his life mm-hmm. and that's unfortunate that it is still happening today yeah it is it's happening to a lot of uh people from the lbgt lgbtq plus community yeah. um community. i think of well. one right now that there was a mm-hmm. transgender mm-hmm. girl um yeah yes girl who um died of what's clearly brain trauma um back in mm-hmm. oklahoma uh right. just this past few months um so if we don't need to get into that either, but I'm sure mm. just based on what I have said, a lot of you probably know what I'm talking about. And it, it right. it's angry that this is this is still going on today. Mm. Yeah, it is angry that that uh this is still going on because like I think we're I in, in in my opinion, I think we're making some progress, but we still need a lot of work to do. Um but, the reason uh, why I always tend to disagree with you is because yes maybe we're making progress in certain aspects but we're we're especially in the states they're doing a lot of mm-hmm. going a lot backwards in certain yeah. states like oklahoma texas yeah. um yeah. florida they're going backwards right now and mm-hmm. um so that's that's the issue when you, you yeah. make progress but then you're going backwards that's no yeah. longer making progress anymore uh yeah yeah, I mean, we're making awareness about you know the the community a little more. Awareness you know. is great. Awareness yes. is exactly the thing you need. Um, yeah. But there's also action that needs to be yes. done as well. Um, Wonderful. And I great. I urge everyone, if possible, to get involved in the action to change things. And I will reiterate what a lot of American podcasts are saying right now, it's an election year. Vote, vote, vote. Mm-hmm. So that changes can be made. Hopefully. That's, for, that's also for you Canadians as well. Canadians, Americans, and also... Well, we don't have an world. election year, but yes, definitely mm-hmm. um, we have oh, yeah. Yeah, the, things the that we can do too. Yeah. 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 But we'll, we'll, we have our next year. 2025 so yes but i what i'm gonna because i don't want to pretend like canada is in the same boat as america right now we right. are not dealing with the same oppressions that they are currently mm-hmm. dealing with when yeah. it comes to the community so we we're i'm not saying we're great because we're not yeah but we're, we're just not, not in the same boat as they are currently in where legislation is basically being you know, ignored or pretend like it mm-hmm. never happened. And that's, mm-hmm. that's what um is happening currently. And right. uh, we're, we're just not on that same boat, right? Hopefully whenever we'll be. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's right. 
That's right. Okay, so we're going to end this. We're going to so end I'm this. So I'm the cap. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, what? I agree. We're going to end this. <laughs> I'm Mikel and and I'm Tanika. We're out until next week, guys. Peace. Bye. Hi, everybody. So I did want to come in and first of all, a make a correction. The little girl that I was talking about in the outro was actually not a transgender girl. She, uh, it was a non-binary um, child. Uh, so identified with the they them pronoun so i i that was a mistake on my part but nonetheless still someone who was dealing with the oppressions um also i did want to end off the episode with um dennis shepherd's victim impact statement um so i'm going to put you into that um, it, again, it's very heartfelt. It's one of the things that, um, again, it's forever stays with me. So I didn't want to include it in t- this episode. So, um, that's it for, for that. I'll put you right into his victim impact statement. And then that's it for this episode. My son, Matthew did not look like a winner. He was rather uncoordinated and wore braces from the age of 13 until the day he died. However, in his all too brief life, he proved that he was a winner. On October 6th, 1998, my son tried to show the world that he could win again. On October 12th, 1998, my firstborn son and my hero lost. On October 12th, 1998, my firstborn son and my hero died. 50 days before his 22nd birthday. I keep wondering the same thing that I did when I first saw him in the hospital. What would he have become? How could he have changed his piece of the world to make it better. Matt officially died in a hospital in Fort Collins, Colorado. He actually died on the outskirts of Laramie. Tied to a fence. You, Mr. McKinney, with your friend Mr. Henderson, left him there by himself. But he was not alone. There were his lifelong friends with him. Friends that he had grown up with. You're probably wondering who these friends were. First, he had the beautiful night sky and the same stars and moon we used to see through a telescope. Then he had the daylight and the sun to shine on him. And through it all, He was breathing in the scent of the pine trees from the snowy range. He heard the wind. The ever-present Wyoming wind for the last time. He had one more friend with him. He had God. And I feel better knowing he wasn't alone. Matt's beating, hospitalization, and funeral focused worldwide attention on hate. Good is coming out of evil. People have said enough is enough. I miss my son, but I am proud to be able to say that he was my son. Judy has been quoted as being against the death penalty. It has been stated that Matt was against the death penalty. Both of these statements are wrong. I too believe in the death penalty. I would like nothing better than to see you die, Mr. McKinney. However, this is the time to begin the healing process. 
to show mercy to someone who refused to show any mercy. <sighs> Mr. McKinney, I am going to grant you life. As hard as it is to do so because of Matthew. Every time you celebrate Christmas, a birthday, the 4th of July, remember that Matt isn't. Every time you wake up in your prison cell, remember you had the opportunity and the ability to stop your actions that night. You robbed me of something very precious, and I will never forgive you for that. Mr. McKinney, I give you life in the memory of someone who no longer lives. May you have a long life. And may you thank Matthew every day for it. <laughs>